Let's talk to Andrew Mockford, though, uh, because Jim Ratcliffe was here uh, in the building at News UK yesterday. He was taking part in the Times CEO Summit, uh, and he said, basically, uh, that Labour's plans to decarbonise the UK's electricity supply by 2030, which is their stated aim, uh, is absurd. He said any government that tries to shut down oil and gas, gas production would be making a strategic and economic mistake. He said the North Sea will die off, it will become extinct, and relatively soon it will be taxed out of existence. That comes on top of a, a, um, a decision yesterday, a ruling made by the Supreme Court, in which basically the future of the new fossil fuel energy projects in the UK were put under severe threat because judges said um, that they ruled in favour of anti-oil and gas campaigners who argued that a council's decision to approve drilling for oil in Surrey was unlawful. Let's talk to Andrew Montford and find out how this has happened. Andrew, very good morning to you. Good morning, Mike. I mean, this case in uh, the Supreme Court is quite worrying, isn't it? Because potentially, on the face of it, um, it sets a precedent which suggests that you cannot now explore for any new oil and gas um, plate, you know, uh, drilling sites in the UK. Yeah, I think the implications of this decision are still sinking in. I think um, until the lawyers have, have poured over it, we won't be absolutely sure what it means. Mm. But it, there does seem to be a suspicion that it, it is going to um, be another severe blow to the North Sea. The North Sea doesn't need any more severe blows at the moment. They're already laboring under these, these, this, this crazy windfall tax. Mm. Um, and, and, you know, we are essentially, we've been trying to close down the North Sea for years now on the quiet. You know, it, it's people talk about the trouble. We're not trading enough petroleum ge geologists anymore to keep it going. It is utter madness when you when you see that we can't run the country on on renewable energy mm. and that we have to have oil and gas, then the idea that we would be better getting the oil and gas from Norway or Qatar or or, or North America is madness. It yeah. makes no sense. If, if you believe in the global warming um, 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 crisis that people keep talking about rather spuriously and it makes and it, it's madness if you don't believe in it right. so why we're doing this I just don't know it, it, it's it's virtue signaling by the politicians which you're you know, I liked the message you read out earlier from the the person who described them as the wooden tops yes. that's exactly it I mean th this these people are away with the fairies we should not be listening to people with such a shallow understanding of the country's economic needs no and many more people than ever are beginning to understand that they are talking absolute nuts poppycock as as targets get moved around and people keep making these ludicrous statements all prefaced with well of course we all know that we have to cut back on our carbon and well we don't actually all know that at all and certainly the political landscape in Europe has been changed over the past month by the votes that took place in the European Parliament where an awful lot of people are sick to the back teeth of the EU's climate policy. Yeah I mean the the, the Conservatives policies on this are no better than Labour's, no. really. I mean, it's the same thing, but five years later, and it's still madness. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, it is. there is a possibility, I think, that, that the UK is going to be almost the only place left in Europe which is still pursuing this madness. Right. It does look like Europe is turning away from it, as, as all, we have all these right-wing governments stepping in. Um, so, yeah, I, I think... I think um, we may be left sort of out on a limb fairly soon. Right. And also, um, Jim Ratcliffe, when he was talking yesterday, was highlighting how the UK taxes North Sea oil and gas producers at a rate of 80 per cent, when American producers only pay actual corporation tax, presumably at 20 or 25 per cent. Yeah, and this the, this is the the windfall tax is doing this, and this is going. You know, the, the conservatives are saying they will keep this in place until oil and gas prices fall back to normal. Well, unfortunately, guys, oil and gas prices are pretty much back to normal. Right. Um, you know, they they are slightly higher on gas. They're they're absolutely back to normal on oil. Um, so why is the windfall tax still there? And I think the answer is that they've made such a mess of the economy that they need the revenues from somewhere. Right. But if they scare the oil and gas companies away, there's going to be even less tax revenue. And, you know, that's just going to put, put more pressures on ordinary taxpayers. Um, so, yeah, your taxes are probably going to go up as a result of this. Right. But there's also the madness kind of stretches even to some of the oil and gas manufacturing companies as well, because BP, um, which has become very woke of recent times uh, and is now no longer even called British Petroleum anymore because of its possible, you know, inferred links to slavery. It's now called Beyond Petroleum. Uh, they've actually stated that at some point in the future they will stop exploring for oil and gas. And you're kind of going, but well, that's what you do, isn't it? 
Absolutely. I mean, you know, they've, they've talked about um, trying to become um, a big player in renewables and they made some moves in that direction. But, but you know, they have been sort of stepping back from that um, um, in recent years. I think they've realized that renewables is, is, is um, it's an error. I mean, it's, it is a huge catastrophic error um, because it will never provide the energy we need. Um, and I think um, in, in 10 years time, prop, the renewables the idea of renewables will be gone. I think people will have seen through it um, because our prices are already starting to, to to rise again because as we put more renewables on the grid, electricity prices go up and people can't take the pain anymore. And yeah. I think people will turn against, you know, when we get Keir Starmer's government and he starts pushing for renewables, people will turn against it. And that includes his own party and the trades unions because jobs are going to be shared, taxes are going to go up, and, you know, the country can't take it any longer. Indeed. Andrew, good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed. Andrew Montford, the Director of Net Zero Watch, uh, on the news this morning.